Hey YouTube, today we're going to be discussing a hot topic of branching amino acids versus creatine. Which one's better? There are so many unsupported claims that are made by supplement companies every year. Uh, in fact, I actually sat on the board of a CBD company and was responsible for making sure that false claims were not made. Uh, it's really hard to know whether or not a supplement is actually worth the money or not worth the money. And at best, they don't deliver what was promised. And at worst, they can be you know, potentially dangerous for us. Stick around because we're gonna dive deep into the world of two popular supplements, branching amino acids, or also referred to as BCAAs, and creatine. And we're gonna determine whether or not they are useful and we're also going to identify if there are points in time when they are just a complete waste of To be able to look at both creatine and branched amino acids objectively, we are going to break this down into four specific categories. We're going to take a side-by-side -side comparison of branched amino acids and creatine, looking at four specific areas and comparing the two whether or not they are useful or not. Hi, I'm Noah Casada. I'm a registered dietitian, and I help people struggling with their weight and trying to be a little bit healthier to identify ways that they can implement sustainable, healthy behaviors. And I wanna help people make sure that they don't have a consistent battle with the scale or their health parameters. So I do this by offering virtual nutrition coaching in addition to offering courses like the 30 Day Challenge Lifestyle Reboot. So without further ado, I want you to subscribe, hit the notification button, and let's get into branching amino acids versus creatine. So you might be asking yourself, right off the bat, is one better than the other? Do BCAAs outrank creatine or vice versa? Branching amino acids and creatine have been touted for their improvement in performance, lean body tissue, and muscle mass. However, it's not clear on exactly what each one helps with. There's a lot of blurred lines, so today we're really gonna break them down so you can understand where one might be beneficial and where one might not be beneficial. I put together this chart first and foremost so that you guys could go ahead and look at the comparison between the two and see which one was actually beneficial and what areas that others were not beneficial. So the four categories that we broke these up into are going to be muscle mass, performance, recovery, and endurance. All right, you can see that for muscle mass, creatine appears to be the winner. And it makes most sense because if your goal is long distance running, carrying around a bunch of extra muscle might actually be a hindrance rather than a performance benefit. So if your goal is to build muscle, branching amino acids might not be the best choice for you and you're better off going with creatine. In terms of performance, it is a little bit more muddied or complicated because it depends on the type of performance. If we're talking short-term high-intensity performance, like lifting weights, creatine is the clear winner. However, if we're talking long-term performance, like running a marathon, then branching amino acids appear to be the better choice. In terms of recovery, both actually seem to be beneficial with regards to supplementation and branching amino acids might have a slight edge compared to both creatine and branching amino acids are groups of amino acids bcaa's or branched chain amino acids are the grouping of three amino acids leucine isoleucine and valine Creatine is a molecule that can be found in our body, but also can be found in nature as well. It is the composition of three amino acids, methionine, glycine, and arginine. So before we jump into the research, let's get a little foundation and a refresher on what amino acids are. So, amino acids are the building blocks to protein and also the building blocks to the development of new tissue like muscle tissue. And a complete protein is simply the combination of these 21 different amino acids uh, so that you have enough of the building blocks to build new tissue, neurons, and so forth. Taking this one step further, this group of 21 amino acids can be broken up actually into two different groups, an essential amino acid group or EAA group, 
and another group which would be considered non-essential amino acids. So essential amino acids are amino acids that your body cannot produce on its own. So it needs to come from an outside source from your diet. So it needs to be obtained through supplemental form or through whole food form as well. All right, so we're actually gonna take a look at an entire layout of these nine essential amino acids that your body cannot produce, it has to come through diet. And to give you a better understanding of where branching amino acids come through in your diet and actually where some creatine actually might come through in your diet as well. You see in this chart, this is a list of essential amino acids with the quantity of each per gram of protein per 100 grams of protein and also the amino acids found in branch chain amino acids and creatine. One thing to mention here with this graph that branch chain amino acids are all essential amino acids so if you're eating enough protein in your diet, you're probably getting the adequate amount of amino acids, of branched chain amino acids that you need throughout the day. So then we have another group. These are non-essential amino acids. And these are amino acids that your body can produce on its own, as long as it has other amino acids to be able to essentially synthesize or, or make it from. So after digging through the research and kind of trying to come up with the ideal situation where creatine and branched-chain amino acids might be useful, I came to the conclusion that it's really not black or white. First up on our list is going to be muscle mass or the development or improvement in lean body tissue. So both creatine and BCAAs have been touted as a supplement that you can take that will improve your lean body tissue. However, creatine seems to have a decent amount of research supporting this claim, but branched chain amino acids don't. They actually have very little scientific evidence to support the claims that they build any muscle tissue. So let's talk about branched chain amino acids. Branched chain amino acids have always had their claim to fame as being protein synthesis, right? The development of more muscle tissue. However, research is actually indicating that that not, might not be the case. The study that we're about to talk about, the researchers noted that there was no added benefit to improvements in lean body tissue or muscle mass by supplementing with branched chain amino acids. In a study looking at the odds of developing sarcopenia or right age-related muscle wasting, in 300 individuals 55 years and older and I quote the researchers here in this cross-sectional study no significant association was observed between dietary intake of total and individual branched chain amino acids and the odds of developing sarcopenia and its components not only did we have this study saying that branched chain amino acids did not prevent age-related muscle wasting the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition, also referred to as ISSN, they stated the following. We concluded that the claim that the consumption of dietary branched chain amino acids stimulates muscle protein synthesis or produces and anabolic response in human subjects is unwarranted. So right, we have a pretty good body of evidence at this point that just does not support the claim, and actually in the, the contrary, uh, that branched chain amino acids support or develop or improve lean body tissue. How about creatine? Does creatine improve lean body tissue or muscle mass? Research is showing that creatine, in addition to strength training, seems to have a pretty profound or at least statistically significant effect on improving lean body tissue. In a systematic review and meta-analysis of 22 studies with over 700 participants, it was concluded, and I quote, Creatine supplementation during resistance training is associated with greater increase in lean tissue mass, LTM, 
it has been pretty well established at this point that creatine can and help improve lean body tissue and muscle mass. Talk about improvements in performance and whether or not branched-chain amino acids or creatine contribute to any sort of improvement with regards to performance. So performance improvements between branched-chain amino acids and creatine are a little harder to tease out and that's, be be and that's because there are really two different measurements and really two different benefits that creatine and branched-chain amino acids provide. For example, if you're trying to weightlift and improve your overall strength training or your one rep max, it's pretty clear that creatine is going to be that big winner. However, running a marathon and using creatine to put on extra muscle tissue, maybe hold a little bit of extra water, that's probably counterintuitive to your sport performance. Do branching amino acids actually improve performance? In a systematic review of branching amino acid supplementation and exercise performance, it was found that branching favorable role in energy metabolism, specifically in increasing the amount of glucose uptake by the muscle. The, re the researchers stated, the study confirmed that glucose is used as an energy source during exercise for workouts lasting more than an hour, which in turn can improve exercise performance and plays an effective role in preventing muscle pain. And ask, does creatine improve performance? The answer is yes and no. In a study published in the Journal of Sports Medicine, the data on single sprints or first bout sprint of any kind are inconsistent. They stated that the ergonomic effect of mass development activities such as running and swimming are not convincing, perhaps because of the side effect of weight gain from water retention. With that being said, studies on strength training suggest that creatine increases overall strength what about endurance? Does creatine improve endurance or even branched-chain amino acids? Is there any evidence to support either that they do? So for branched-chain amino acids, and do they improve performance? In a study published in the Journal of Exercise and Nutrition, it is presumed that the intake of branched-chain amino acids can lower the concentration of serotonin, a central fatigue sun substance, during exercise. This in turn lowers the concentration of muscle damaged substances such as CEK and LDH and enhances exercise performance. So there is some evidence to support branching amino acids may reduce the actual fatigue that you get during long intense exercise and may actually play a beneficial role in, in some metabolism. Does creatine actually produce better performance during endurance activities. And so according to the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine, no ergonomic effect on submaximal or endurance exercise are evident. So currently, no, creatine does not support endurance. And I quote, ergonomic effects on mass dependent activities such as running and swimming are not convincing perhaps the side effect of weight gain from water retention. With that being said, other studies on strength training do suggest that creatine does provide a performance benefit. So it really depends on what sport performance you're looking for. About exercise recovery. And right, exercise recovery and being recovered, you know, one day to the next can be the difference in you winning or you losing. If there's any benefit to creatine or to branching amino acids with regards to exercise recovery, that could be a significant reason for you to want to take either this looking at the effects on branching amino acids, muscle recovery, branching amino acids uh, were found to have a significant effect on muscle soreness and recovery from exercise. So does creatine improve recovery uh, after exercise. In another systematic review and meta-analysis on creatine monohydrate supplementation, it was found that creatine supplementation may help reduce exercise-induced damage. The study went on to say, creatine supplementation appears to be 
effective in reducing exercise-induced muscle damage and may help accelerate recovery from muscle damaging exercises. According to another review published in the International Society for Sports Nutrition, uh, safety and efficacy of creatine supplementation in sports exercise and medicine. Quoted, participants supplemented with creatine had significant isokinetic 10% plus 10% and isometric plus 21% knee extension strength during recovery from exercise-induced damage. There's a lot of evidence to support the use of creatine for exercise recovery. With that being said, though, again, more research is still needed to verify these claims. But which one is better? When we look at the data, my answer is it depends. If you're looking to build muscle mass, creatine might be the way to go. If you're looking to improve your performance and maybe improve your endurance, then branching amino acids might be the winner. So it really depends on what your physical fitness goals are, what your training regimen is like, and what your end goal is really gonna be.